seven last minute tips for the AMC 1012. The first tip, relax and don't stress too much. Try to stay cheerful before the test. You can take deep breaths. So try and calm down because remember, this is just a contest. It's not the end of the world if you don't do good. Number two, don't get stuck on the order of the problems. Problems are not always going to be exactly in order and everyone has different strengths. Something that you find hard, someone else might find easy. Something that someone else finds hard, you might find easy. So just do the best that you can by looking at which problems are right for you to solve. If a problem looks too bashy or it's maybe a very easy problem, low number problem that's a little bit tricky, don't be afraid to skip it and come back to it later. You should not have the mindset that, oh, it's a number five. I should be able to solve it, but I'm not able to solve it. It's okay. MAA often misplaces problems, so just move on and you can always take a look whenever you want to. Number three, budget your time wisely. Try to go over the first 15 problems in maybe 30 minutes or 35 or however much time you is, depending on how much your problems you're trying to solve at the end, but try to save some time for the remaining problems at the end. You don't want to spend a whole hour on the first 10 problems thinking that I need to make sure I'm 100% correct and I cannot get a single one of these wrong. And then it turns out you have 10 minutes left on your timer ticking and five more problems left that you still need to solve to get 15 solved and then you're extremely stressed thinking about how you should have gone faster. So budget your time wisely. Number four, problems 21 to 25 are not always very hard. For example, on the 2021 AMC 10A, I, like many other people, did not even look at number 25 because it's number 25. So it should be the hardest problem on the test, but it actually turned out to be not a very difficult problem. So that's why it's always a good idea to take a quick glance at those problems. Maybe you're good at algebra. So if you see a polynomials problem, maybe you give it a go for one or two minutes. Maybe you don't, maybe you're not very good at algebra, but you see a geometry problem and you're good at geometry. So you take a look at that one. Look at the problems. Definitely don't just avoid them thinking that there's something above you or anything like that. And yeah, tip number five. Always save one to two minutes at the end to double check that you have bubbled your answers correctly and you've marked every problem you solved. The last thing you want is you having solved 20 problems and you forgot to bubble in the last one because you were so caught up in solving the next one. So be careful. Also, make sure you bubbled in the correct problem. One time, I actually forgot to skip the problem and then what happened is for the, all the remaining problems, all the answers are shifted up by one. So then all of those problems are wrong because all the answers are shifted. So when you're checking, don't just say A, B, C, B, A, D. Always try to associate the question number. So one, A, two, B, three, A, or whatever it is. Okay, next tip, number six. Don't worry too much about how much you need to reach a cutoff score or for example, make aiming. A lot of people, they get hung up with, I need to solve 16 problems to make Amy. So I have to solve 16. And then when they only solve 14 and there's two minutes left, then you start getting very stressed and disappointed. Don't worry about that. You shouldn't let the supposed cutoff in your mind determine how you do. Just focus on doing your best. Focus on the problems you think you can solve and don't worry about the problems you can't solve. Last but not least, number seven. Remember that each unanswered problem gives you 1.5 points. So you don't want to just be guessing randomly and hoping for the best that maybe you'll get one of them right randomly because the expected value is going to be less if you just guess randomly. But if you do manage to eliminate it to two or three choices, then you can guess because then you have a much higher chance. I don't recommend guessing for just four choices because then, the, well, first of all, with four choices, 
you don't even know for sure whether the choice you eliminated was actually the wrong answer. So I recommend just two to three choices and then maybe you can guess. And also you can try meta solving techniques as well, because those will be helpful when maybe you don't solve the problem, but you kind of hack the solution. If you're looking for any last minute resources, you can check out the Mastering AMC 1012 book and video series. I've covered most of the important concepts there. Lastly, good luck for the AMC 1012.